Welcome back everybody. It's Adina Cal Meta here with CWW7 News. And for today's broadcast, I wanted to bring you guys a really quick update in regards to the United States and North Korea. We're also going to talk about Russia, but I'd first like to start with this report from the Business Insider in regards to China and Taiwan. Apparently, China is threatening to go to war if the United States Navy visits Taiwan. And Trump has just signed a bill stating that it might. Here's that report. China accused the United States on Thursday of interfering in its internal affairs and said it had lodged a complaint after U.S. President Donald Trump signed into law an act laying the groundwork for possible U.S. Navy visits to self-ruled Taiwan. Tensions have risen in recent days after a senior Chinese diplomat threatened China would invade Taiwan if any U.S. warships made port visits to the island, which China claims as its own territory. On Monday, Chinese jets carried out island encirclement patrols around Taiwan, with state media showing pictures of bombers with cruise missiles swung under their wings as they carried out the exercise. On Tuesday, Trump signed into law the National Defense Authorization Act for the 2018 fiscal year, which authorizes the possibility of mutual visits by Navy vessels between Taiwan and the United States. Such visits would be the first since the United States ended formal diplomatic relations with Taiwan in 1979 and established ties with Beijing. The Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Liu Kang said while the Taiwan sections of the law were not legally binding, they seriously violate the One China policy and constitute an interference in China's internal affairs. Liu stated in a daily news briefing that China is resolutely opposed to this, and we have already lodged stern representations with the U.S. government. He went on to state that China is firmly opposed to any official exchanges, military contact, or arms sales between Taiwan in the United States. That situation right there has the potential to explode, you guys, and I will definitely continue to keep you updated. But I want to move on to another potentially explosive situation with North Korea. I have a report here from RT News, and they are reporting that the Russian military delegation had arrived in North Korea for dialogue. But this is the thing. This is the second time in two weeks. Here's that report. The delegation is headed by Deputy Director of the Russian National Defense Commander and has been on assignment in North Korea since Tuesday. There has been no word on the mission from the Russian military. However, almost simultaneously with news of the visit, the Russian Foreign Ministry stated that Moscow is using any opportunity for direct communication and will continue to do so, including with the help of the Defense Ministry. The Deputy Foreign Minister stated that North Korea is our neighbor. We must develop relations with this country. The Russian military has traveled to North Korea to activate a settlement of the crisis in the region. The deputy head of the Defense Ministry's Public Council told Interfax that the aim of the military political and diplomatic efforts is clear. All sides should be put back at negotiations table to put away provocative and threatening military rhetoric and demonstration of force. He noted that such missions are part of a roadmap proposed by Moscow and Beijing, which seeks a solution to the nuclear tensions through dialogue. This comes at a time that Rex Tillerson stated that the U.S. is ready to talk any time North Korea wants. Reuters reported the day after that despite Tillerson overture, the White House says it's not the right time for North Korea talks. No negotiations can be held with North Korea until it improves its behavior, says a White House official. Raising questions about U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson's offer to begin talks with North Korea anytime and without preconditions. Given North Korea's most recent missile test, clearly right now is not the time, said a White House official. Meanwhile, the Daily Mail is asking the question, is Kim planning another missile launch for this weekend? Experts fear North Korean leader will carry out new tests to mark the anniversary of Kim Jong-il's death. A Washington, D.C. think tank has warned of potential weapons of mass destruction activities in North Korea, with December 17th seen as a possible date for a new ballistic missile test. Previous North Korean dictator Kim Jong-il died on that date in 2011. In the past, North Korea has used these dates with rocket tests and military drills. In research, 
released in late November, the respected Center for Strategic and International Studies said date analysis showed elevated chances for provocations by the secretive nation within four weeks. Meanwhile, Kim Jong-un vowed to develop more nuclear weapons on Tuesday while personally decorating scientists and officials who contributed to the development of North Korea's most advanced intercontinental ballistic missile, the Hwang Song-15. Kim Jong-un said on Tuesday the scientists and workers would continue manufacturing more latest weapons and equipment to boister up the nuclear force in quality and quantity. And Reuters is reporting that North Korea on Thursday warned it would take merciless self-defensive measures should the United States enforce a naval blockade, which Kim Jong-un sees as an act of war. Citing a foreign ministry spokesman, the North's KCNA news agency said a naval blockade would be a wanton violation of the country's sovereignty and dignity. U.S. President Donald Trump was taking an extremely dangerous and big step towards nuclear war by seeking such a blockade. It added, it was not immediately clear what U.S. proposal the agency was referring to. Should the United States and its followers try to enforce the naval blockade against our country, we will see it as an act of war and respond with merciless self-defensive countermeasures, as we have warned repeatedly, stated the agency. So tensions are continuing to escalate between the United States and North Korea. And I don't think it's going to simmer down anytime soon, you guys, but I will definitely continue to keep you updated. But speaking Speaking of nuclear, I have a report here from the Washington Free Beacon, and they are reporting that Russia has sharply expanded their nuclear arsenal and are also upgrading underground facilities. Here's that report. Russia is aggressively building up its nuclear forces and is expected to deploy a total force of 8,000 warheads by 2026, along with modernizing deep underground bunkers, according to Pentagon officials. The 8,000 warheads will include both large strategic warheads and thousands of new yield and very low yield warheads to circumvent arms treaty limits and support Moscow's new doctrine of using nuclear arms early in any conflict. In addition to expanding its warheads, Russia also is fortifying underground facilities for command and control during a nuclear conflict. It goes on further to state the new assessment also suggests Russia is planning to blend its conventional forces with nuclear forces in future conflicts, further complicating the use of American nuclear arms as a deterrent to warfare. The new disclosure on Russia's arms buildup is among some of the details being studied by the Pentagon as part of a major review of U.S. nuclear forces called the Nuclear Posture Review. The conclusions of the review are expected to be disclosed around the time President Trump delivers his State of the Union address to a joint session of Congress next month. Trump last summer called for sharply increasing the size of the U.S. nuclear arsenal during a meeting of national security officials on July 20th. He said, I want modernization and rehabilitation. It's got to be in tip-top shape. The current posture of U.S. nuclear forces was set by then-President Barack Obama in 2010 review that called for reducing the role of nuclear weapons in the size of the arsenal. It goes on even further to state that the Pentagon's new posture review is based in part on a review reversal of the outdated Obama-era assessment. Russia's nuclear forces, new warheads, missiles, bombers, and submarines are increasing sharply. The nuclear modernization is regarded as more ominous because it's coupled to Moscow's new strategic doctrine that calls for quickly resorting to nuclear weapons during any conventional conflict. And it goes on even further still that Russia's military has boasted that its current nuclear forces significantly exceed U.S. forces, and that could tempt the Russian to launch an aggressive operation against NATO and use their nuclear forces to dissuade the alliance from responding. As Russia expands its nuclear arsenal, the United States Marines is practicing full-scale air, sea, and ground assault on Southern California bases. The OCR is reporting that a war game exercise that deploys a battalion-sized air, sea, and ground assault is playing out across Marine Corps bases in Southern California. The exercise, which includes more than 1,000 Marines from the 1st Marine Division and more than 600 Marine aviators and their crew cruise is taking place at Camp Pendleton. It combines the 3rd Marine Aircraft Wing's Winter Fury exercise with the 1st Marine Division's Steel Knight training. Both are held annually to prepare Marines for worldwide threats and to sharpen their skills for upcoming deployments. But the combined exercise is the first in more than a decade, military officials are saying. We are setting up a full command structure within the wing that will command and control 
all our assets flying in the airspace that is real and virtual. We are doing command and control integration with the 1st Marine Division. The exercise at 29 Palms recreates a battalion air assault to establish an airfield and refueling center behind enemy lines. It trains Marines and sailors in planning, deployment, and command and control against an enemy force with similar capabilities. The 1st Marine Division is a 22,000 strong force. Definitely wars and rumors of wars and distress of nations. I wanted to bring you guys a really quick quick update. But please do leave your comments in the comments section. Tell me what you think. Tell me what's on your mind in regards to these nations. I would love to hear from you. Also, come and visit us on Facebook where I have these stories and many more. Also on our website at www.cww7news.org. All right, everybody, I will see you in my next video. God bless.